All right, I'm going to be playing something, probably one of the most disturbing things I've come across as it pertains to false prophets. We're going to be examining a Timothy Dixon video today. Very disturbing, as you will see. Please stay with me. And so we're just going to jump right into it. Now, Timothy Dixon is at Robin Bullock's church. He's preaching. He's up on stage. And so we're going to go through some clips and comment as we go. Here we go. I, I went into a vision. I laid down and I was praying. And I went into a vision. And Jeremiah, the eighth chapter, and the 22nd verse came before my, my mind. I did not see it visually, but I knew it in my mind that is there no balm in Gilead? Is no physician there? Why then has the health of the daughter of my people not been restored? And from that point, I went to a vision and I saw one of the greatest powerfulest atomic bombs had went off. Now, Timothy Dixon, he said as he started his vision, the eighth chapter of Jeremiah came to mind, specifically verse 22. Let's go see that. Here we are, Jeremiah chapter 8. Let's scroll down here. Here's the verse. Verse 22, is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then is not the health of the daughter of my people recovered? Somehow, Timothy Dixon extrapolated a atomic bomb out of this verse. How does that happen? Well, here's my guess. Timothy, see this word right here, balm? Timothy thinks that word is bomb. And you may disagree, but then how do you explain how he could ever come to that vision from reading Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 22? He doesn't know the difference between bomb and balm. It's unbelievable. This guy should be nowhere near the pulpit in any church. He has demonstrated not only that he is biblically illiterate, but that he's illiterate when it comes to the English language. All right, now I've forwarded uh, a little bit into the video, and Timothy's really going to start getting into the meat of the subject here as he begins to expound on his vision or visions. Here we go. I went to a dream, and a man appeared to me with long hair, and he was wearing a camel's girdle and a, about his loins, and it was about up to here. Now, I want you to remember this part. In Timothy's vision here, a man with long hair appeared, and he was wearing a camel's girdle. Anybody know what that is? Well, perhaps he meant to say a, a camel skin girdle. And it was about his loins, right? So his loins were covered with it as well. Now, why? Well, just bear with me here. I need you to remember this, because we're going to come back to that in a little bit. He was barefoot. I have never told this, but once, twice. I shared it a little bit with Robin earlier in the office, and I've told my wife. After this, the man come to me, and he looked like John the Baptist. And I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, who is this? And he's asked me, he said, would you receive him? If he came today, and I looked at him, I said, would I? I don't know. He looked like a hippie. <laughs> you know, I was raised uh, Pentecost. He had to look like me, you know. Is that Y'all ain't going to stone me, are you? But, and I, I'm, and, and I said, Lord, you know I will. You know my heart. Lord, you know I'm not like that. Lord, you know I see the heart. And he said, that, he said, you will receive him. But most of the world won't. 
never recognize the authority or the power of which he'll come in. In my hand to the good Lord, it was Robin Bullock. Oh, the crowd likes that. They're clapping. Robin Bullock is their rock star prophet. So they like this vision. Is it true? I would say no. This is Timothy Dixon flattering Robin Bullock, just like Cat Kerr did when Cat Kerr gave Robin the Gandalf staff in that official ceremony back a couple of videos. But the way that he described Robin Bullock, a man full of authority and power, so powerful that the world would know who he was and they would not accept him. Again, this is Timothy almost attributing messianic characteristics to Robin Bullock. Y you think Timothy likes Robin? Oh, yes, he does. And, and stay with me because you're going to find out how much more. I told some friends, I told my wife, I said, there's a man coming. I said, it'll be the days of the word of Elijah. It'll be the days of the power of Moses. Is that just insane? Now, here I, wa I want to remind you, Robin Bullock is a confirmed false prophet many times over. This is not a debate. This is fact. Also, Timothy Dixon is a false prophet many times over. But the audience and the followers of these false prophets, they don't care. Because even as we've seen in the past, Timothy's up there storytelling. He's just storytelling. And the crowds love it. They're getting their fix. But listen to how he says, oh, Robin Bullock not only is like John the Baptist, he's like Elijah, he's like Moses. It's incredible. But the world will not receive the power and the word and that anointing. That's going to not just turn the page, but it's going to recreate something in America that's going to shake this world. One more time. Just oh, like there he is. Robin's receiving it, although I don't see the staff that Cat Kerr gave to him. But nevertheless, he has his wizard staff, and he's receiving more praises, more accolades, and he probably believes it all. Does Robin Bullock have power and authority? No. He's a guitar-playing, leather jacket-wearing, scrunchy hair-wearing false prophet. But the crowds love it, so they eat it up. All right, so we're going to jump forward a little bit, and it's going to get super freaky deaky. I began to pray, and I'd already had a dream. And I've tried my best to just shut up, and it's about one of those that's about to bust again. Now I can tell it. I'm with him. Me and Robin walked. All right, so I want to make a note here, a uh, point of interest. Timothy has picked up his wizard staff, so he's at full capacity wizard power as he tells his fake story here. So I'll back it up a little bit, and here we go. Me and Robin walked through the, in this dream, we'd walk through the courts of glory. think I could tell the fool all right so in this cringe awkward moment Timothy is looking over at Robin and he's seeking Robin's approval he wants to know you think I can tell the full story the full vision you know the unrated version and Timothy I'm sorry and Robin is giving him his approval. Yep, go ahead. Tell the whole story. Some of this, uh, I'm going to tell it anyway. I'm asking you to keep your minds pure. 
What does that mean? <laughs> I'm asking you to keep your minds pure. Oh boy, get ready. What could that mean? I'm going to tell it. Me and Robin was walking through heaven. We had entered into the courts and we had no clothes on. None. Robin was walking through heaven. We had entered into the courts and we had no clothes on. None. All right, so here is Timothy's vision. He's walking in heaven with Robin, and both of them are buck naked. All right, creep factor 11. The dials are set at 11. Now, I want you to think about this. And that's, by the way, that's why he gave that comment, keep your minds pure. Try to imagine these two old men walking into the Holy of Holies, buck naked. This is a vision he said that God gave him. Now, no matter what's happening in the audience or on the internet, I will tell you that people make mental images, and it's cringy, and it's very disturbing, isn't it? And we was coming before the Lord bare. And then when it changed, Robin had a camel's, like a, a vest that wrapped around him. It didn't girdle about his waist, but it wrapped around It didn't girdle about his waist. Did you hear that? So Robin and Timothy are butt naked, but Robin gets a camel skin vest, and that's it. <laughs> so what happened to the camel skin girdle at the beginning of this video? Remember I told you to make a mental note there? Why didn't Timothy put that on Rob to cover up his nakedness? He didn't do that, did he? This is sick. Around his neck. We walked in and Robin had a huge, huge scroll in his hands. And I was following him as he took the lead. So Timothy says he was following Robin. Why? You know, Robin has the vest. He's got the giant scroll. He's taken the lead. What are you there for, Timmy? Well, you know why he's following behind Robin. I don't need to say these things. This is an erotic dream that Timothy had about Robin Bullock. I want you to try to imagine, is this legit? Have you ever read anything like this in the Bible? And the answer is no. As far as prophets being naked, well, there's been a couple of, of uh, verses you can read about that, Ezekiel, Isaiah. Uh, but those were actual visions. And actually, I'm sorry, those were actual instructions from God as it pertained to things God wanted them to do. But they weren't in heaven. And most, or I shouldn't say most, but many theologians would even debate the fact that they were completely naked, right? When David brought, for example, he brought the ark into Jerusalem, he danced before the Lord. He was wrapped in a, a, a loin linen, a loin cloth. Um, but it's up for debate in many, in many cases. You know, when Adam and Eve discovered their nakedness, they were ashamed, and then God made them animal skins. Because even God knew, right, that that needed to be done. But now this old codger has him and Robin Bullock just strutting into heaven with their junk all hanging out, butt naked. And I know some of you might think, oh, that sounds rude, Drew, to speak like. It's true. This is what this old man wants you to believe. And these are the mental images that he's planting, not only into the congregation, but again, across the internet to whoever would hear this. It's absolutely absurd, and it's perverted. This man has a man crush on Robin Bullock. And, and I want to say one more thing while, while you indulge me here. He told this story to Robin. And Robin's like, yeah, go ahead and tell it. That right there should tell you something about Robin. Because I can tell you, if, if any dude came up to me and said, hey, Drew, oh, hey, Bill, what's up? 
hey, I, uh, I want to tell you about a vision. Oh, wow, you had a vision. Okay, let's hear it. Well, you and me were walking through the courts of heaven. Oh, that sounds pretty cool. I'd love to go to heaven. That sounds like a really awesome vision. Oh, there's one more detail. Okay, what's that? Uh, we were both buck naked. All right, well, look at the time. <laughs> time for you to go. I've got to go. To security, get over here. Remove Bill, please. He's, he's leaving. That's how that would go. But Robin's like, oh, yeah, tell it, tell it to everybody. We were just two naked grown men walking through heaven. Absolutely sick. And as we went in, angels was flying through the heavens. And it reminded me of the scriptures over there where they was screaming, Holy, Holy Lord God Almighty, which was and is. Hallelujah. Why did it come out? You know, if this was an actual event happening, perhaps the angels might say, Holy, Holy Lord God Almighty, please make those old men put clothes on. For they're absolutely corrupting the holy sanctuary of God, where God is, right? The angels will be looking at them as, as just a couple of weirdos. Good grief, put some clothes on. This guy, this is absolutely demented. And again, the crowd sits out there and claps. And they're like, oh, wow, this is real. Nothing wrong with this vision. So now I forward it a little bit. Um, I just wanted to show this. This was particularly... Uh, disturbing too. Uh, Timothy and Robin are going to have a rap battle. All right. I guess in this case, it would be a tongues battle. Good grief, right? So, again, this is all performance. These clowns are performers, and they do it for the masses. There is no mention of the gospel of Jesus Christ. There is no reaching out to the broken to share the gospel with them. With them, it's all about their supernatural gifts, their anointing of God, their, it's all about them. It's all about them. Never mind the fact that they're, again, confirmed false prophets who have made their livings lying in the name of Jesus Christ. They're professional liars who are making all kinds of money doing this. So now I'm going to show you one more clip. If you wanted to know, according to Timothy, what this whole vision of his was about, why they walked into heaven buck naked, why they presented this scroll to God, so on and so forth, it was all for America and Donald Trump. That's what it's about. It wasn't for more blessing to share the gospel. It was about Donald Trump. And we speak to the President of the United States of America, Donald Trump. Pack your bags. Get ready to move inside a new White House. So, well, brother, you crazy. I know I am. I know I am. Just disgusting, perverted, disgusting, warped, twisted, add your own adjectives. Uh, these people are pure evil, biblically illiterate. Even as you saw Alabama Woodsman put out a video this morning, in full detailed demonstration as to how biblically illiterate Robin Bullock is, uh, even showing the clip from earlier in the video on Timothy Dixon. They're biblical illiterates who sow fantasy into the church. It's all about them. It's all about them and how they have the power and how they're going to rescue everybody. 
and it's void of the true gospel of Jesus Christ. This is disgusting. These men are pure evil. And I would encourage you to stay away from them. There is nothing new under the sun. Here in Jeremiah chapter 3, as long as Timothy wants to go to Jeremiah, look what it says here. Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, saith the Lord. Therefore thus saith the Lord God of Israel, against the pastors that feed my people. You've scattered my flock and driven them away and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doings, saith the Lord. How can we apply, although not directly, because this was specific to Israel, nevertheless, the practices are the same, aren't they? How does Robin Bullock and Timothy Dixon scatter the flock? How do they not feed the people? Well, they're not preaching the true gospel. Therefore, they naturally scatter them. Many people's faith becomes shipwrecked when these false prophets prophesy falsely. And people fall away. They walk away from the living God because of these false shepherds. And you can read, I encourage you to read the 23rd chapter of Jeremiah. Uh, it is quite telling. And this has always been. So read through this. But I do want to show you one more thing. In the book of Mark, chapter 16, look what Jesus said as he was departing. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. This is what we're supposed to do. Right? We're not supposed to get up on stage in front of millions of people and tell them perverted visions about two old naked men walking through heaven with camel skin jocks on or vests. This is so disturbing for anybody that loves Jesus Christ with all of their heart and soul and mind and all of their strength. This should disturb you. And we're going to continue to call these prophets, these fake prophets, out and expose them, as we're commanded to do in Ephesians 5.11. And make note of them, because they're destroying faith. Mark these men and avoid them. Certainly pray for them. Pray for Timothy Dixon. Pray for Robin Bullock, for they're doing a tremendous amount of damage. So certainly keep them in your prayers. But in the meantime, avoid them. Avoid them like the plague. Avoid them like your soul depends on it. And serve Jesus Christ in truth and sincerity and sober-mindedness.